for anybody that tears their ACL outside of structured sports Mm -hmm. now I'm not talking about like when you're a little kid hopefully Mm -hmm. you don't tear your ACL when you're a little kid but I'm talking about like high school sports where there's an athletic trainer yeah college sports athletic trainer professional sports athletic trainer if you're outside of that setting it's really I always say this unfortunately most people do not know what they're getting themselves into yeah from the surgery so let's (laughs) let's talk a little bit about that you don't have to go too in depth but Mm -hmm. What was that process like? Because you never had a significant injury. Now you're gonna get ACL surgery. Yes. Um, so I, pr- I mean, I saw people in high school, you know, tearing their ACL and getting surgery, and somewhat knew what the process was like, I guess. But in terms of like going to the doctor, it's like pretty much just like you need surgery, and you say okay, and you schedule a date, and that honestly, that's it. Like yes. I'm like not exaggerating. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah i mean that's that's really it yeah like <laughs> so yeah what what did you do because i know i know how you are as a person i know your mindset i know that you want to know what's going on so where what happened after that research on your own or talking to your friends or um so i mean i was still going to pt like i think once i had to get the mri and it was decided i needed surgery i stopped and you know, we're planning on resuming after surgery. I think Mm. just, you know, insurance or whatever, you Mm. want to save those visits. Um, But then, yeah, I mean, I pretty much, that was it. Like they somewhat told me what to expect of like a timeline by like, okay, you know, it's, there's a lot of advances in like recovery and exercise science now. Like, you know, you might be running by five months, like all Mm. these, you know, overall this might take anywhere from eight months to a year Mm -hmm. like to recover fully and I think when I did my own research you know if you're reading stuff online or YouTube of like first of all you see a lot of professional athletes that are back and ready to go like basically running and doing like all these agility drills at like four or five months post surgery Mm -hmm. and you're like well I should be able to do that and you don't realize that that's because they're in PT 24 7 you know with somebody um, that's telling them what to do every day, multiple times a day. Um, yeah. And they have all the recovery tools in the world, you know, mm-hmm. to get through that too. So yeah, I think I was just expecting the whole process to go much, much faster than it did. And I would say it took me total probably 11 months or maybe even a full 12 months to mm-hmm. really feel like, okay, I think I can do this on my own now. And yes. I was not expecting that. I was thinking like seven, eight months, I'll yes. be fine. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about in this next section. But one of the things that was unique to your case was that how your knee was functioning or your whole lower body was functioning <laughs> was prolonged for a span of three years. Yeah. So that's where you were functioning. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. You were doing some <laughs> high level stuff, but all of that kind of got ingrained into how you move. Yes. And that's what you were fighting or trying to overcome after surgery too. Mm-hmm. So the first thing like for a lot of listeners, because I know people have a lot of questions. I mean, I hear it daily, right, in the clinic. But that's one thing that how you're moving before surgery, that kind of sets up either a very good strong base or kind of a shaky foundation for you to progress with the rehab. So that's something yeah. that... I think most people going into ACL surgery, they don't take into consideration, like what is my function like before? And a lot of the athletes that you're speaking of, right? If they do prehab, if they have a couple weeks before, Mm -hmm. it's literally like you're walking and doing daily stuff like normal. You just can't do anything laterally, rotationally. You can't do anything explosive, of course, but then you wouldn't even realize that that person's injured. You know, when we do prehab or when I do prehab with someone, that's really my goal is like, the day before surgery, you, sh- you should feel like you don't need the surgery, even though you need the surgery. Yeah. But that's ideal, right? So, I mean, that's kind of, it gives you a little bit more insight, I think, as to what happened after surgery, because I'll let you share the next thing. How was it after surgery? <laughs> um, yeah, so I had a rough time, I would say, to put it like lightly, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the first four or five months. Like, I think that probably a lot of things I did led to that where I was maybe trying to push myself too hard. I was maybe trying to, I was just up on my feet probably more than I needed (laughs) to be. Um, was never letting any swelling drain, but I also just, I had a ton of swelling from pretty much right after surgery until four or five months. And I remember my first PT appointment after 
surgery, like this is two days post-surgery, I had no idea like how swollen my leg was gonna be, how like immobile I was gonna be. Like when they ask you to like bend your knee as far as you can, like I could barely move it and I was just like floored. I could not believe that like I literally can't move my left leg. Yeah. <laughs> and even that, it takes a mental toll on you, right? Yeah, because definitely. That first really that first month for most people, it's pretty rough. Yeah. Because it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. When you're stuck in that from what it was like before when you were active. Yeah. Right. What else were some of the struggles initially, would you say? If you were to share your experience to like someone that's gonna go through this hopefully not but someone that yeah. that's gonna go through this in the near future what was some of your you uh, might have blocked it out of your memory yeah already, maybe but, um, <laughs> yeah. i think just forcing yourself to like slow down was probably one of the hardest things like i have a really hard time slowing down or just resting or like I can't even take naps like I just <laughs> I can't yeah. um, but I think I was I was honestly trying to do too much I was walking around too much mm -hmm. I tried to like go back into lab like nothing had really happened mm -hmm. like I was ditching my crutches at times when I probably shouldn't have been I think my advice to somebody would just be like slow down and let the swelling drain yes yeah yes <laughs> and that i'm glad that you said that out of experience because i i did not know you in that beginning stage yeah of you know that acl that yeah. first four or five months i yeah. think but that's the number one priority for anyone going through acl the two things you you really have two jobs to do in the first three weeks i always say and this is going to set up either a very smooth <laughs> rehab or not and the first thing is swelling Mm -hmm. You just got to let your body drain out everything and start to have normal circulation and lymph drainage around yeah. your knee. That's the first thing. Yeah. And the second thing is just, you just got to get your knee straight. <laughs> like, that's like two yeah. jobs. Oh, um, that was so hard. And now that I'm remembering, weeks. now that you say that, I remember yeah. how I could not straighten my leg. Like that was the whole yes. thing was I <laughs> would wake up in the middle. So that was the thing is like, you, yeah. you're supposed to sleep with your legs straight, but I couldn't straighten my knee out. Yes. And like, I couldn't before surgery anyway. So <laughs> having to do it after surgery was like even harder. And I remember them telling me like, don't put a pillow under your knee. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, if I don't, I'm in it's excruciating true, yeah. pain. And I would wake up in the middle of the night I think maybe having stretched in my sleep and mm, just it's just painful. shooting pain <laughs> yeah. like wake up like yelling yeah. like like the dog would be like what is happening yes. because I mean that's okay that memory is coming back to me now and like we should warn people about that yeah I, I'm sorry to bring back some of these bad memories <laughs> yeah. but you know it's interesting because I guess I've seen it so much over the past decade people don't share this part because they don't want people to know how bad it was and i'm not no, using this to scare people but yes there's gonna be times <laughs> when you're in extreme pain yeah you're gonna feel like what is going on with my mm -hmm. knee you know all of this is part of that healing process because there was a lot of reconstruction that happened to put a new acl in there yeah so that's you know things that it will get better though because it did get better yeah right? yeah after well. <laughs> that first the first week is probably the most rough the first month is pretty rough but after yeah. you pass that first week then it usually starts to turn that corner a little bit and you start to make faster progress. So.